nose tinted. So today's video is going to be my labour and delivery story. Um, and I will have to let go of little baby here, but I wanted to introduce him. So this... Are you going to say hi? No. This is Nicholas Allen Leonard Ross. He was born on the 9th of February 2019 at 8.55am, weighing 7 pounds and 3 ounces. Um, he's just perfect. I absolutely love him to bits. He has a full head of hair. <laughs> um, he actually did have more when he was born, but he is cradle capping at the moment. Um, he's still so small and I love him to bits. Um, but yeah, I thought I'd introduce him to you guys. Um, so I suppose we should get on with telling them how you arrived. Hey. Hi. Hey. Oh, you're wide awake, Mambo. Oh, wide awake. Okay. <laughs> so I traded the baby for a cup of coffee and a mug that matches my nails. Um, <laughs> because that's important. Um, but yeah, I kind of wanted to make a video on my labour and delivery because it's something that I want to look back on and I thought I'd best do it while it's still fresh in my mind. Um, and also I had a really positive birth experience and you always get people that share their negative experiences. As soon as you fall pregnant, you start getting the scare stories. And I wanted to put my positive birth story out there just so that like, first time mums or people that are anxious about their second or whatever it may be can come across a positive birth story so let's jump into it so on saturday the 9th of february um at about 10 to 3 in the morning um i woke up and i was wet not hugely wet i hadn't leaked through to the sheets or anything like that but i could feel that my pants were wet so um i got up out of bed and all of a sudden there was a huge rush of water. So I ran to the bathroom because quite honestly, I thought I was peeing myself. Um, <laughs> so I ran through to the bathroom and it just kept coming. So I shouted on Spuggy and I said that I thought my waters had gone. Um, it didn't smell of anything. It was clear liquid. So I was like, this is definitely my waters. And there was a huge pop when um, my waters broke. It wasn't painful, it wasn't uncomfortable, it was just a pop um, that was audible to the point where it woke Spuggy up. <laughs> um, so yeah, at 3am my waters broke. Um, so I phoned the, what's the name of the ward? Westburn Ward, which is the labour ward here in Aberdeen. Um, I gave them a call and just said, look, my waters have broken. Am I okay to labour at home? What do I do next? I've had no contractions. They were lovely. They let me know that um, a lot of people think that as soon as your waters break, you need to go into um, the hospital. But because I hadn't had any contractions, they were more than happy for me to labour at home. Um, and they said that um, as long as I get contractions within the 24 hours, I was safe to stay at home. If nothing had happened within 24 hours, they wanted me to go in. So that was great. So I went downstairs and I phoned my mum and my sister and my dad um, and I also filmed a short clip that I put in the weekly vlog for that week um, which is bizarre to look back on. So I did all that and by this point it was about 20 past three and I'd made a cup of tea for myself and I'd seen to the dogs and my plan was to have a cup of tea, have a bath and then go back to bed for a couple of hours because obviously with it being my first I was expecting quite a long labour. So I ran the bath, I had my cup of tea, I didn't get into the bath um, before the contractions started getting really quite intense. So at 20 past three my contractions started, they were maybe every three minutes apart, um, lasting less than a minute and then by quarter to four I was in the bath and they were every two minutes and they were lasting a minute and a half to two minutes each. So I was straight in there with the strong contractions. So at four o'clock, I said to Spuggy, I was like, you need to phone your mum because she was uh, taking the dogs for us, which was a huge help because I don't know what we would have done otherwise. Um, so she took the dogs. So um, he phoned his mum and let her know what was happening um, and that he would be over fairly soon with the dogs. So at half past four, we left the house and um, we got the hospital bags, we packed that into the car, we packed the dogs into the car, and highly illegally, I'm sure, um, I didn't sit on the seat in the car, I sat on the floor with my head on the seat. Um, I could not sit down, I physically could not sit on my bum, even if I wanted to. So, 
Spuggy drove us to the hospital, ran two red lights in the meantime because the contractions were starting to get quite intense. Um, so we were in the hospital by quarter to five and at quarter to five I got taken into this little room by two midwives and by this point I was asking for the drugs. I was like, I want all of the drugs and I want them all now. I want the most intense drugs you can find and I want them now. So they said that they had to examine me to, to make sure that I was in established labour first. So I was like, okay, I probably wasn't that calm actually. Um, but that's what happened. So another midwife came in and said, okay, we're going to take you through to um, like a different room, like a birthing suite. Um, so she took me through to the birthing suite and she decided to give me an examination. And at this point I'd been in labour for maybe an hour and 40 minutes and I was between four and five centimetres dilated. So um, I asked for the epidural and she said that she could give me that but she needed to see that I could sit still for at least half an hour um, in order to get the epidural. So she gave me a shot of morphine which just went into my thigh I believe, if I remember correctly. Um, I got an injection of morphine into my thigh and that was to try and ease the pain enough for me to be able to sit still for half an hour. Um, so I got that and I also got gas and air. So I stripped down completely to no pants, a blanket over me and I believe just my bra, um, which was how I was most comfortable at the time. And I laboured through. So this went on, Spuggy left then at just after five to go and drop the dogs off at his mum's because he they were still in the car in the hospital car park. So he drove to his mum's to drop them off and he came straight back. Um, and Spuggy got back at, I want to say maybe 6, maybe 6am and by this point I was still talking but when the actual contractions were happening I couldn't talk through them, I was squirming, I was, I mean it wasn't comfortable, it was painful but it wasn't as painful as I think I had it in my mind. So it got to about 6am and I said I really need to push. Um, and they were like, no, you won't, you won't need to push yet, it's too early. And the midwife told me that if I pushed um, at 6am when I told her that I needed, I felt the urge to push, that I would stretch or rip um, my cervix and I would distress the baby. So I was doing everything in my power not to push, which if you've had a baby or you're a way to have a baby, you will soon realise is physically impossible. So a changeover happened at 7am, so the midwife that we had went off and the new midwife came in and before the old, the, the first midwife went off I asked her to check me and like check my progress and she said that she didn't want to because there was a risk of infection because my waters had broken which was a bit disheartening because I just wanted to know that something was happening. With the pain I was in I just wanted to know something was happening so she said no um, and that was well that was the end of it, if she says no, she says no. Um, so then she left at seven and the new midwife came on and I asked for the epidural. I said, I'm still waiting for the epidural, I want it and I want it now. And she was like, okay. So she went off to get the doctor and I was just waiting for him to come through to give me the epidural. And she asked if there was anything that she could do in the meantime to make me more comfortable. And I was like, I want you to check me and just see where we're at. So she was like, okay, I don't think you've gone very far, but I will check you and we'll have a look. This is where shit got real. So she started the examination and she said, okay, Miss Ironside, your cervix is, and then she looked at me and she was like, it's gone. It's time to have a baby. We're 10 centimeters. When you get the urge to push, go with it. And I was like, okay, well, I'll hold on because I want the epidural. And she looked at me and she was like, no, Miss Ironside, there isn't time for the epidural. Excuse me? <laughs> I want the epidural. Well, fuck me. <laughs> Shit got real, real quick. So I started pushing, I was on my side. Um, every time I got the urge to push, I would push. And then eventually I got to the point where I was well aware that something was 
ready to come out. So I got up on all fours because I'd specified in my birth preferences that I didn't want to be on my back, which I was right to say because I was extremely uncomfortable on my back. Um, baby was the right way around, everything was good to go. So I got up on all fours on the back of the bed and I had my gas and air in one hand. I had Spuggy with my water bottle on the other side um, and with a sick bowl because I did experience um, quite a bit of sickness. So um, I was pushing and pushing and pushing and the head came out at 8.40 um, and his head popped out just at the end of my contraction and there was a five minute wait between that contraction and my next one so the head was just chilling um, and I asked the midwife in this time for a cold flannel. Now, I wanted the cold flannel for down there because it was burning. <laughs> it was like a burning sensation and I thought a nice cold flannel is just what I want. So I asked her for a cold flannel and she was like, yeah, of course you can, not a problem. So she got me a cold flannel and the next thing I know, she slaps it on my forehead and I'm like, I kind of look at Spuggy and I'm like, that is not where I wanted the flannel to go. But I didn't specify and she wasn't to know so and I had a cold flannel on my head um, and just before this Spuggy had asked if there was anything I wanted and I was like it's really hot in here could you open the window um, so he opened the window and when you're about to give birth there has to be two midwives in the room so this second midwife walks into the room and goes oh it's chilly in here and then goes over and shuts the fucking window and I was like I want to punch you and at the same time again she wasn't to know so anyway and I have a cold flannel on my head I threw up two or three times I think um but it wasn't anything major it was just because I'd had some oasis before I left the house um so that was fine and at 8 55 Nicholas Alan Leonard Ross was born um, he weighed seven pounds three ounces he was perfectly healthy um he was crying they cleaned him up um, they asked me if I wanted to do skin to skin, I said yes. Um, so I went onto my back now and they gave me an injection which I'd agreed to in my thigh, um, which was to help with, the, with giving birth to the placenta. So that was fine and I don't know why I thought it would take a while but as soon as I was on my back, um, she started tugging and pulling and what have you um, and I delivered the placenta. Um, and that was all perfectly fine, everything came out as it should have, um, so that was good. Um, it wasn't uncomfortable, it wasn't sore, it was a breeze compared to what I'd just done. Um, but yeah, so I then said to her, I was panicking because I was like, I'm going to need stitches and I know I'm going to need stitches. Um, and I was like, do I need stitches? And she had a look and she was like, I'm just going to give you a quick examination, check and see what the damage is. So she had a look and she was like, nope, no stitches, no tears, just a small graze on like the inside of my vagina, I suppose. Um, so I was like, great, I don't need stitches. I don't, I haven't torn, it's all, it's all good. So I was in labor for a total of six hours. Nicholas was born at 8.55 and at 9.20, um, I asked if I could go for a shower and they said yes so I got up and I went for a shower um, I then came back and got dressed into some joggers and a vest top I put my hair up um, I brushed my teeth all that kind of stuff meanwhile they were doing they were weighing Nicholas and measuring him and all that kind of stuff and um, just kind of generally checking that he was okay uh, Spuggy had gone out for a cigarette because he'd just witnessed his son being born and he was a bit gobsmacked. Obviously we went one at a time so that there was someone with the baby. Um, and then we got taken through to the labour ward and told we had to wait for observation for six hours and I got some soup and a sandwich and we had I had my friend Jenny come in and visit us and then my dad and my sister and my niece and then Spuggy's um, dad and brother came in with um, his girlfriend and we just, and my mum and my stepdad came to visit. It was just, we had visitors and um, the midwives were lovely. And I don't know what else to say. It was a really positive birth experience for me. I'm not gonna sit there and say that it's painless because it's not, but overall looking back, I had a very positive birth experience. I was encouraged to know that I could do it. I wasn't in so much pain that I couldn't bear it. Like they made it so that I felt like 
it's painful but I can do this, I'm away to meet my son, they spoke through, they, they talked through everything that they were doing so I understood where I was, they made it very clear what they needed me to do, if they needed me to pant, if they needed me to push harder, if they needed me to just back off for a minute, they were really really good and our midwife, the midwife that actually delivered Nicholas was called Katie and I want to send out a huge thank you to her because I was cranky and I was a mess and um, I asked so many questions and so did Spuggy and she was absolutely lovely. We couldn't have asked for anyone better to deliver him. So we felt really lucky. I was really lucky to have such a short labour. I was really lucky to have a labour that didn't have complications. Um, overall, really positive and a really lucky birth experience. So I wanted to put that out for you guys um, just because it was such a positive experience and I do want positive stories to be out there as well. So I hope this video has given you that. Um, if you enjoyed this video then don't forget to subscribe down below and also click the little bell icon so that you get a notification every time I upload a new video. Um, at the moment I am uh, vlogging every week of my maternity leave in order to document my first year being a mum and I also have lots of new mummy content going up and some beauty and lifestyle thrown in there as well so yeah until next time guys bye